Hello! In this video I would like to touch on this topic of uh, using AI to learn versus using AI to cheat. Um, lately I have had a lot of discussions with colleagues and students uh, abroad and in my own country and we talk much about using AI as a tool for cheating and can we get detected by for example AI detectors that can find if a text is written by an AI or not um, yes there are AI detectors for text but we cannot trust them because we can always use AI to not be detected by AI and thus that is an ongoing battle which will only go back and forth by this video I want just to show you how you could utilize AI to cheat and why you shouldn't use AI to cheat. These are my personal opinions and my own reflections. Uh, please share your thoughts on this topic and if I'm completely incorrect I would love to hear why and how. Um, so let's get started. So for this video I uh, created a manuscript that uh, uh, is about what I'm going to talk about in this video. So I will use this manuscript here as it's, if I read the text, it's pretty AI uh, uh, written. So I will take this video here. So this is not an assignment. Right now it's just a, a, a manuscript for this video. So I will take this manuscript for this video, which says what I'm going to talk about in this video. And I will give that to an AI detector. Um, I found one called Zero GPT. There are a lot of others. So let's check. Uh, let's detect this text. So if we look at this, it says that uh, the text is 48% likelihood written by an AI. Already that's telling something because if it's 50% then it could be or it could be not so we should <laughs> we should we should have a better text uh, but let's say yeah I had hoped for more than 48% because this is purely AI written anyhow we can probably lower lower this percentage so let's do that let's do like this by the way, I'm using two plugins. I'm using something called Wide GPT, which lets me control the width of my GPT because I like using this tool. And I'm also using voice control because I like to talk with AI because it's much faster than writing with my keyboard. So let's, let's do it like this. I will give you a text that is written by AI. I would like you to analyze why it's written by AI. I want you to give me a list of 10 points on how we could, why we can find that this text is written by AI. This is not the best prompt, but we will try it. And then we also give it this text, which the AI has written. Analyzing the provided text for signs that it was generated by AI involves looking for a certain pattern, characteristic, or nuances that AI written text commonly exhibits. Here's a list of 10 points explaining why the text might be identified as AI generated. Uniformity in tone, lack of personal anecdotes, overly formally formal language, repetition of phrases, broad and general statement, predictable structure, lack of specific examples. There's a lot of good tips here why a text might be written by an AI. So let's take these 10 points. So we say like this. Nice. Let's take these 10 points and apply them to this text so it looks less like an AI text. I want you to think thoroughly and in depth and analyze the text I give you and then you will apply the 10 points on that text to make it less AI. Do your best job. I trust you. 
yeah. So we give it the text again. We will, we will now implement the 10 specific strategies. They aim to introduce elements of human writing, anecdotes, viable structure, and more. Idiomatic expression. Yes, here's how we can apply these strategies. Applying these strategies, and let's adjust the text. Welcome back to your channel, where we dive into the future one pixel at a time. Today we're embarking upon a journey through the complex world of artificial intelligence, specifically focusing on AI writing tools and the ongoing battle with AI detectors. But there's a twist. Revised segment. Hey there. Yes. So it did not uh, convert the whole text, so please convert the whole text. I often use this shift enter to, for my vision, just separate uh, this piece from this piece. Um, hey there, welcome back to it's your favorite spot for peeling back the layers of tomorrow, one intriguing pixel at a time. Today we're diving head first. We're zeroing in on those crafty AI writing tools, cat and mouse game with AI detectors. Here's the twist though, it's not all about dodging detection. Nope, we can check out the very foundation. Yeah, so this might be more personalized. Let's just see this text here. And then we see the first text we had, which was Welcome back to your channel. Anyhow, we will now take this text here, which is the which is the new text with the applied non AI tone, so to say. Can I just, okay, so we take this here. And then we go to the AI detector. We take away that, we replace that with the t new text, which we have applied don't be AI points on, so to say. And let's detect this text. So now it's uh, human written with an 8% uh, non AI. So we went from uh, let's take uh, let's take the original text again, which we have which we have here. Uh, yes. So with that little tweak, we, according to this um, AI detector, we went to eight point four percent. So we detect this new text here, and that's at 48%. Both are AI written, of course. But this was just like one pattern you could use. Um, other patterns could be you give ChatGPT a piece of handwritten or your own text, and then you ask it to analyze that text and uh, find the essence of uh, you. Uh, the words you use, the grammar you use, the vocabulary you use, and so such. And then you try to apply that also on the text, and then it will be even more personalized, like you have written. And there's like an infinite amount of techniques you could use like this. Anyhow, AI detectors are a thing, and they pro can probably find AI generated text, definitely. Uh, but there's easy ways to go around them probably and also they are not reliable um, they could say like 48 percent here um, or not but you could easily use techniques to change that um, by using ai for example i believe it's an ongoing uh, battle of cat and mouse anyhow so I wanted to highlight this topic, for example, that AR, AI gener uh, detectors are maybe not to be trusted, um, but they could be trusted in a way as well, because if a student, for example, 
does not care about uh, the schoolwork um, and just say please finish my schoolwork for me you will probably find that with an AI detector but if a student wants to finish the work with a higher grade and he cares about the work but he wants to perform better he could use these kinds of technique to make it better but he would if you ap applies that techniques he would probably learn from it as well so my takeaway from this is don't let AI kill curiosity because if you're curious if you want to know more learn more AI is a fantastic tool to let you learn more and you can use it to amplify your own strengths and, and make yourself better but if you don't care if you're not curious you can use AI to hurt yourself pretty badly I believe um, I like what a lecturer is saying here from Sweden he says that AI will never be worse when, than what it currently is that means it will only get better from here on out so it's kinda here to stay and we should probably learn what to expect from it and how to use it in the correct manner that that's my takeaway and I have an anecdote as well that uh, AI or no AI it is like saying I like running I am a runner and I like to go out and run but I will never beat Hussein Bolt in running he's faster than me and he will always be faster than me but that doesn't stop me from running because one I like running it makes me feel good two it's something to challenge myself because I'm not competing against Hussein Bolt I'm competing against myself yesterday I want to be faster today than I was yesterday or I want to be healthier than I was yesterday there are many different things that are valuable for running even though Hussein Bolt is faster than me we are not even running the same race so it doesn't matter and I believe that's the same with AI AI will probably make stuff better than us but we are in a way not competing against AI because we are competing about ourselves and if we let AI take uh, take over our curiosity about new stuff then we will probably hurt ourselves in in the future um, there are faults in my analog an analogy and that is that if we want to earn money for example it's probably probably not so good that AI is better than us because we st we still have to make an earning but that's discussion that we also have to think about and take and I believe m people are taking thinking about um, so that my, my analogy is not perfect but this is the best I've figured out so far and I I think this is an interesting tool a very useful tool for teachers for students and it can be certainly uh, used in the complete wrong ways but it can also be used in a very good ways in, in many different topics and this technique technology is far from perfect but it will probably only get better and more useful so when will we try to adopt and when will we have the discussions about it if not like now probably that was all for this video a little bit long i hope i got the message through uh, thank you very much and have a good day